and it's pronounced Fiona Mazel, right? Mazel, rhymes Mazel. with gazelle. Gazelle, gotcha. Yeah, you'll never forget it. Uh, we're here today with Fiona Mazel, and she's going to tell us about her new book, Woke Up Lonely. Um, so thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Um, so tell me about the book. Uh, well, I'll give you the, the book in brief. It is about a cult leader and his ex-wife and the four people that he takes hostage. And it takes place over a four-day Waco siege type scenario. Um, if I'm being pretentious, it's kind of a book about loneliness in America. <laughs> but I think probably at bottom, it's just a, a big old love story. And so what made you want to write a book about loneliness, specifically American loneliness? Well, you know, I think I've been kind of pathologically uh, obsessed with loneliness since I was a, a kid. I've always been interested in... This seems uh, very healthy. <laughs> no one ever said I was a healthy girl. <laughs> um, I've always been interested in some basic questions about loneliness. You know, is it congenital? Is it something we're just born into? Is it um, just sort of froofy and ex existential? Is it surmountable? Is it circumstantial? You know, why is it that so many people, when they are in a group of their best friends, their lover, their family, do they feel still so estranged? What is that about? So I decided to write a novel that might kind of try to explore some of those questions. Yeah, it's interesting, the, uh, the Helix. Um, you know, they seem, they're out to cure loneliness, but it's like a very modern type of loneliness. And do you feel like there is a modern loneliness, that there are things in the world today that make us lonelier than we were before? I think we're more aware of how lonely we are, precisely because there's so many opportunities to foster connectivity and intimacy that we didn't have, you know, even 20, 30, certainly not 50 years ago, Facebook, Twitter, just the internet in general. And these are, you make it sound like these are false ways to connect with people, or maybe well, less genuine ways? I don't know. It depends what you're using it for. You know, if you're using social media to replace more normal or conventional styles of camaraderie, like... I don't know, going bowling together or playing cards or even, I don't know, having sex. If you're using though that media to replace those experiences, then probably it's bad. But if you are homebound and have no friends and have no life and you are using social media to kind of branch out, then it actually can be a very, a very good thing. But um, there have been a lot of studies that have come out recently over the last few years that indicate that there is a real uptick in loneliness. You know, 30 years ago, there was in 1984, I think, there was a study that asked people how many intimates do you feel like you have? And on average, it was three. And they did the same study about eight years ago, and on average, the number was zero. So that tells you something. That tells you something. You know, about how miserable people are these days. Um, so does the Helix take uh, inspiration from something in real life? A little bit. I mean, the Helix is a, it's a therapeutic community, so I read a, a lot about all kinds of cults religious orthodoxies, but in particular, therapeutic communities like uh, RC, mm -hmm. which is um, re-evaluation, counseling, co-counseling. Uh, I think Harvey Jackins, Jenkins, Jackins started it. And it's basically people just get together and they start to confess to each other and counsel each other through their problems, which sounds sort of nice enough until these people end up in a room for 12 hours a day just <laughs> crying and flogging each other. And uh, what made you want to set, so there's, there's two main settings in this book, and there, it's North Korea and I think Underground Cincinnati. Underground Cincinnati. Um, and I think it's probably... What, those the, don't go together? It's the only book I've read, yeah, where it's, it's Cincinnati and North Korea. Um, what made you want to set in these two places? North Korea seemed like an obvious counterpart to... To the Cincinnati. Kind of, yeah, no, to the kind of culture of loneliness that I was describing. You know, North Korea is the last black spot on the map. It's made... Um, of isolation, a kind of sustaining ethos. I mean, it is an unbelievably isolated and lonely country. And I thought, well, this is quite interesting because, you know, when I was writing it, Kim Jong-il was still alive and very much in power, and he is very much a cult leader. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it would make sense that there would be a kind of affinity between my cult leader and Kim Jong-il. As for Cincinnati, you know, I thought it was kind of an innocuous sort of place to locate a cult compound and also a good place to have an underground city of sin because who's going to look in Cincinnati? Mm -hmm. No one's looking there. No I thought if you're, you know, a diplomat's daughter and you want to do something very naughty, everyone's <laughs> going to be looking for you in New York mm -hmm. or, you know, L.A. No one's looking for you in Cincinnati. Um, so what else are you reading right now? Um, I just started a really good book called um, A Questionable shape by Bennett Sims mm -hmm. that just came out. It is a zombie apocalypse novel, but that sells it short. It's really just kind of this long, beautiful meditation on multiple subjects, you know, among them uh, the undead, death, 
romance, immortality, mortality. It's just exceptional. And the writer, Bennett Sims, is so bright and he writes these beautiful, lilting prose sentences. About the undead. About the undead, you know, and it's got a lot of footnotes, which maybe will turn some people off because they think it's kind of annoying metafiction, but it is nothing of the kind. Mm -hmm. It's quite good. And so uh, what are you working on next? I'm working on a new book. Another and, novel? Yes, another novel. Um, and this will be your third? It'll be my third, if all goes well. It's about uh, emotional incoherence, you know, what happens when you just do not understand why you do the things you do. And... Um, Specifically, it's about a guy who wakes up one morning and has no idea what he did the night before because he was really drunk and, you know, we've heard that story a million times, but then he's presented with evidence that he actually accosted and perhaps raped a woman. And he has no idea if he is a man who is capable of doing this or not. He's absolutely appalled. And so the novel is a little bit about him trying to find out what happened, but it's actually also about neural prosthetics. So go figure. So it sounds like you're pretty far into it. I am. I, at least pretty far into a first draft. I hope by the end of the summer that I'll have the draft completed. But it's kind of a, it's a bit of a crime novel. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, Woke Up Lonely is a bit of a spy novel, too. Yeah, but it's funny because, you know, what do I know about spy novels? Nothing. What do I know about <laughs> crime novels? Nothing. I just sort of boldly forge ahead and hope for the best. So you don't, you don't read spy novels or crime novels? No, but I thought that for this new book, it might be wise to go and read some crime novels. So I went to Mystery Bookstore down on... Uh, in, on, in Tribeca mm -hmm. and asked them to recommend some stuff. Those people are amazing. So I gave them very specific criteria for what I wanted and I've now got you know four books that I'm gonna actually read. Although I might be so intimidated by how good they are and how well plotted that it might turn out to be a bad idea. Cool, well thanks for being with us. Thank you so much.